Hello everyone. In this session, we shall be uh, we shall be discussing the FMG recall, July 2024, the biochemistry portion. The target audience for this uh, this video particularly will be the FMG students, of course, because they would like to know their biochemistry question answers. And another thing is, I would request all the students who are going to appear in the examination on the 11th of August. 2024 to note the topics so the topics will be important because the board is similar the same board is going to prepare your question paper also so their chances are you can get similar questions now because this is totally based on recall some of the options can be not from the exactly what were there in the examination some of the questions the sentences can be here and there but by and large it will cover all your topics so let's get started question one the drug methotrexate acts by inhibiting which of the following enzyme now let's see how methotrexate functions the methotrexate it inhibits an important enzyme dihydrofolate reductase this enzyme is required for the formation of tetrahydrofolate the tetrahydrofolate so formed in turn it will be converted to n5 n10 methylene tetrahydrofolate this will convert uracil to thymine the only difference between uracil and thymine is of a methyl group and this methyl group comes from N5 N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate which in turn comes from tetrahydrofolate and this tetrahydrofolate in turn comes from dihydrofolate and hence the methotrexate inhibits this enzyme dihydrofolate reductase thereby inhibiting the formation of thymine inhibiting the formation of thymine let's also now see the answer so the question drug methotrexate acts by inhibiting which of the following enzyme the answer is dihydrofolate reductase now another question is a family slept in a closed room with wood gas stove on a chilly day all people died by next morning what is the most probable cause of the death the answer is cyanide or carbon monoxide poisoning or hydrogen sulfide or azide which will inhibit the complex 4 out of which there will be complex 4 is the terminal complex out of which carbon monoxide is produced by the wood gas combustion and hence in this particular case the answer is carbon monoxide poisoning please note the electron transport chain and its inhibitor itself is a very important topic. So let's see the complex one is inhibited by pyrcidin A, amobarbital and rotenon. The complex two is inhibited by malonate. Complex three is inhibited by British antileucite and antimycin A. And complex 4 is inhibited by hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide and cyanide. Out of which the wood gas combustion particularly is responsible for release of carbon monoxide. And hence it is carbon monoxide poisoning. Another question. A 3 month old baby was presented with severe hepatomegaly and cataract in both the eyes. The child appeared lethargic and hypotonia. Identify the enzymes involved. Now, I cannot find out whether it was clearly the oil drop cataract was given or not. Some said yes. If you can help me in the chat box to find out whether oil drop cataract was given or not in the examination. But this type of cataract, if you see and if it was there in the examination, it is seen in galactosemia. Galactosemia means it is accumulation of galactose in blood. 
So let's see the various causes of galactose accumulation. The galactose is formed from glucose and the galactose is released from lactose. The lactose is converted to glucose and galactose. So it is in monosaccharide which comes from the disaccharide lactose. The galactose in turn is converted to galactose 1-phosphate. The enzyme here is galactokinase. K is for kinase. The next enzyme is galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase. This enzyme, it will convert galactose 1-phosphate to glucose 1-phosphate. At the same time, you can also notice here that there is conversion of UDP glucose to UDP galactose. Whatever galactose is formed, it is converted back to glucose by another enzyme galactose epimerase. So this enzyme here is epimerase as galactose is an epimer of glucose at carbon atom 4. Any of these enzymes if defective will result in accumulation of galactose and hence it will result in formation of galactosemia. However, the most common is classical galactosemia which is presents in a presentation as seen in the examination question. So, let's see the question again. A three-month-old boy was presented with severe hepatomegaly. Any feature of hepatomegaly or acute liver failure type of condition is seen in classical galactosemia. The cataract can occur in both galactokinase defect and galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase defect. But because both are present, hence the answer will be galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase defect. Let's see. This question is quite simple. We have discussed this under hereditary fructose intolerance. So, for those who are going to appear in the NEET examination, hereditary fructose intolerance is another important topic which appears at 6 months because 6 months is the time period for exclusive breastfeeding and at around 6 months we start with weaning. And when we start with weaning, we usually start with fruit, fruit juices and this child who is suffering from hereditary fructose intolerance will have similar features as we saw for galactosemia but major difference here will be the one of course is the age of presentation. Another feature which will be different here will be no congenital cataract. For hereditary fructose intolerance, there is no congenital cataract which is seen. The cataract is not a feature. The cataract is not a feature for hereditary fructose intolerance. As far as question is concerned, the exclusive breastfeeding should be done for 6 months that we have seen under hereditary fructose intolerance. Of course, it's an integrated question. You might answer it from PSM point of view. Now, another question. A one-month-old child presents with history of immediate crying after breastfeeding with associated diarrhea and vomiting. Now, here, key word is immediately crying and is most likely diagnosis is. Now, the first thing which we give as soon as the child is born is lactose and hence this is congenital lactase deficiency congenital lactase deficiency i do not know what is else was there in the options but whatever is in the option it will not be able to compete with lactose intolerance 
so yes it is congenital lactase deficiency which will present with lactose being accumulating which will cause abdominal cramps all the features which are seen in this case immediate crying after breastfeeding diarrhea vomiting all those are classical features then what is the composition of lactulose if the question is lactulose then the answer is galactose and fructose lactulose is used as a laxative also lactulose is used for the treatment of hepatic encephalopathy in the treatment of hepatic encephalopathy let's see why the lactulose it is a disaccharide by the intestinal bacteria it gets converted to lactic acid acetic acid this will tend to decrease ph it is a donor of proton this proton will combine with ammonia released in the gut due to any of the intestinal bacteria any source inside the bacteria to form ammonium ion the ammonium ion is not absorbed and it will be excreted from our system so yes lactulose is also used as a laxative it is also used in the treatment of hepatic encephalopathy which if the question was the lactose composition then we saw it earlier your answer will be glucose and galactose so depending upon what was the question whether it was on lactulose or lactose the answer will change then these are the common disaccharides the sucrose is invert sugar the common table sugar it is glucose and fructose lactulose is galactose and fructose lactose is galactose and glucose maltose trihalose cellobiose isomaltose all of these are homodisaccharides the only change is in the bonds but in all of them the two constituents is glucose and glucose the only change in the glycosidic bond then another question a 7 year old child of short stature was brought to opd with chief complaint of hyperpigmentation and multiple skin lesions there was some question related to it the statement can be here and there but it showed results in skin cancer and which is most likely defect which has caused this type of disease first let's diagnose this disorder of course it is zero derma pigmentosa you see classical finding here there is hyperpigmentation which is shown the hyperpigmentation which is shown the hyperpigmentation is due to hyperpigmentation blistering of skin very ugly looking skin as seen in zero derma pigmentosa and this is due to defective nucleotide excision repair this happens with us also when we go out in sun the sun has uv radiation in it when the uv radiation falls on our dna there are two if there is two adjacent thymine wherever they are present when uv light falls on it it will be converted to thymine thymine adducts it forms thymine thymine adducts also known as bulky adducts in detail we have discussed all of these questions in the in our sessions on the classroom sessions but just for reference you can remember that 
thymine adduct by dimers and or bulky adducts all of these are synonyms which are used for the formation of tt double bonds in between themselves now the opposite adenine will be free as a result of which this thymine thymine dimer they will come keep on accumulating and keep on absorbing light and it will keep on resulting in hyperpigmentation blistering of skin eventually resulting in skin cancers another question zellweger syndrome is due to which organelle defect the answer of course you know it it is zellweger is a mutation in pex genes it is defect in the formation of peroxisomes this will result in accumulation of very long chain fatty acid branch chain fatty acids to some extent are also oxidized in the peroxisomes they will also accumulate the amino acids toxic substances but there will be deficiency of plasmalogens the plasmalogens are actually formed inside the peroxisomes and this can also present as refsum disease which is oxidation of branch chain fatty acid accumulation of phytanic acid can result in peripheral neuropathy retinitis pigmentosa ataxia and in adrenal leukodystrophy there is mutation of abcd1 gene this the transporter which is formed from this gene is responsible for bringing in very long chain fatty acid inside the peroxisomes if the transporter is defective the very long chain fatty acid will not enter however the question was very simple zellweger also known as cerebro hepato renal syndrome is due to which of the following organelle defect the answer is peroxisomes it is due to peroxisomal defect another question a 40 year old female working as senior executive leading a sedentary life style presents to opd with palmo plantar pigmentation x ray spine calcification shows in on intervertebral disc the urine sample gives positive benedict test so the terminology can be here and there but the important point is palmo plantar pigmentation calcification on the intervertebral discs and positive benedict test these are can be presented as like this it is pigmentation and this hyperpigmentation is also known as ochronosis and this is seen in specially if there is homogenetic acid acid oxidase defect homogenetic acid oxidase defect will cause accumulation of homogenetic acid and this here is your answer homogenetic acid when it accumulates it will form black colored compound known as benzoquinone acetate and that is responsible for blackening of urine classically seen in elkeptin urea then oh this was such an easy question cherry red spot without organomegaly i hope suppose we have discussed all types of sphingolipidosis for sure and i asked you to put one table of sphingolipidosis and glycogen storage diseases anywhere in your room so cherry red spot without organomegaly is tay sachs disease if in the question it was cherry red spot with organomegaly then it is neiman pick was there any question related to gosher's disease if there is some question or it was in the option of this question i am not very sure but if there was a question related to gosher's it is beta glucocerebrosidase defect and it is responsible for erosion of long bones of course like any other sphingolipidosis mental retardation fertility is seen in all of them then another question a couple presents to opd with the 4 year old child who has self mutilation behavior and poor growth identify the condition and enzyme involved in it so it is due to hgprta's deficiency lishnehan syndrome 
probably this figure was not given i have kept it purposefully so that you get a photographic memory it is hgprta's defect and this is lishnihan syndrome it is characterized by hyperuricemia it is a important pathway of purine salvage pathway and whenever there is a defect in the purine salvage pathway especially hgprta it will represent as self mutilating behavior the child will have compulsive eating disorder biting disorder of his own lips fingers and of course this is an x linked disorder and affecting male more often and this is characterized by hyperuricemia this here is the enzymes of salvage pathway adenine phosphoribosyl transferase and a common enzyme which is hgprtase which converts hypoxanthine to inosine monophosphate and guanine to guanosine monophosphate and this we have discussed it so many times probably this nobody has missed it and this is classical kessel's necklace it always affects by and large symmetrical presentation niacin deficiency pellagra 4d's so many times we have discussed under tryptophan under dfx under so many things we have discussed this multiple times this in the examination nicotinamide is said we have written in our notes that nicotinamide is the active form of ni niacin and it can occur due to b3 deficiency nicotinamide deficiency if nicotinamide is not there in options then you can mark vitamin b6 or tryptophan deficiency any of them can present with classical 4d's diarrhea dermatitis which affects kessel's necklace it affects basically c3 c4 dermatomes it is always bilateral it is always on both the sides and hence it results in the formation of necklace the answer is nicotinamide which of the following can be mediated by crispr cas9 technology the crispr let's first find out what is crispr cas9 it is clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats you have an rna guided tail which is posing which is taking inside the desired segment inside and it will bind to the dna like as shown here so here in this diagram you can see that there is an rna guided tail and then it is taking the desired dna segment desired rna segment to bind to the dna segment and there is a associated cas9 protein crispr associated cas9 protein it is an endonuclease and it will cut the dna wherever you need to do insertion deletion all of those are possible with crispr cas9 so what we can do is we can edit dna with the help of crispr cas9 it's a promising technology especially for the upcoming gene therapy enzyme replacement therapy all those and the question cannot be simpler if it was exactly this question then it is was probably the simplest question rickets is due to deficiency of vitamin it is vitamin d it is vitamin d average blood sugar in the long term is monitored by the probably one of the two options can be here and there but it is hba1c the answer is longest long term if i have to control the if i have to see the blood glucose control for over 2 to 3 months then it is hba1c if i have to see it for 3 weeks then it is fructosamine then which of the following substances is used in a sample collection in tube for blood alcohol concentration measurement we use the gray vial in the gray vacutainer this is for glucose estimation why as well as for the blood alcohol and lactic acid for the estimation of them, them as well so you have different types of vacutainers there is different type of tube colors they are having different um, for different parameters we use them I discussed this already there was a question on inicet related to order of draw 
there was a question in NEAT. We have already discussed this. And this is sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. If in the options there was dichromate or potassium dichromate, potassium dichromate actually combines with ethanol and it will release that chromium ion and it will give color. So it is used for estimation of alcohol concentration. If it was for the sample collection, then sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. And if the question was uh, saying for the estimation of blood alcohol, then it is potassium dichromate. Another question, a 50 year old man who is chronic alcoholic was presented <coughs> with complaints of confusion, tingling sensation and bilateral edema was seen in the periphery. His history revealed polished rise. So this is classical findings. Complaints of confusion, tingling sensation, bilateral edema, polished rise. It is in berry berry, berry berry. Now see, because it is edema, it was wet berry berry. But probably because there is not too much distinction, bahut zada aise options mein tha nahi, dry berry berry, wet berry berry. So what I can get from recall that the options were simple. So it is berry berry. It is B1 deficiency, B1, B2. All of these are very important topics, especially for the neat aspirants. Also, I cannot choose between water soluble vitamins. All of them are important. Another question, the patient had a history of strenuous exercise but forgot to take his meal and later had alcohol in the party. Which of the following is inhibited by alcohol? Now the alcohol that is ethanol gets converted to acetaldehyde which further gets converted to acetate. During both these reactions, NADH is formed. During both these reactions, NADH is formed. This here is an alcohol dehydrogenase requiring zinc and this is another acetaldehyde dehydrogenase dependent on zinc. The acetate so formed can form palmitate resulting in fatty liver or can enter into TCA in the form of acetyl-CoA. But the ratio of NADH to NAD is quite increased when on consumption of alcohol. So high NADH will promote the conversion of pyruvate to lactate because during this reaction the high NADH will promote the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. Now actually during this conversion under anaerobic glycolysis we have seen that NADH is required and gets converted to NAD. Now please note because pyruvate gets converted to lactate in presence of high NADH the forward reaction will occur in other words, we can say that pyruvate will be depleted. That means less of gluconeogenesis because pyruvate is a very important source for gluconeogenesis. Similarly, oxaloacetate gets converted to malate. During the forward reaction, NADH is converted to NAD. Is converted to NAD. Now because NADH is getting formed from alcohol metabolism, now lot of NADH comes from alcohol metabolism, the oxaloacetate will get converted to malate. In other words, we can say that oxaloacetate is depleted, there is decrease in the source of gluconeogenesis. And hence, in high NADH to NAD ratio, gluconeogenesis will remain inhibited it will remain inhibited in presence of ethanol metabolism. Another question, which of the following manifestations is seen in as vitamin A deficiency? Of course, it is by tot spot. Probably the image was not given. I have kept it purposefully so that aspirants can also get an idea. They can get an image based questions on this. 
white dot spot very common is, is for the confirmatory sign for vitamin A deficiency. However, the first symptom for vitamin A deficiency is conjunctival dryness. It will lead to corneal dryness and then to keratomalacia also known as liquefaction of cornea. And once this stage is reached, it will become an irreversible damage and results in blindness. Vitamin A deficiency is the most common cause of preventable blindness. Then the tumor marker for carcinoid syndrome is hydroxyindole acetic acid. The tryptophan is converted via a series of reaction to serotonin, the hormone that makes us happy and the serotonin will then become high 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid. In carcinoid syndrome, it is a tumor secreting large amount of serotonin. It is serotonin excess syndrome and hence large amount of 5 hydroxy indole acetic acid is seen. Please note one more point. We have discussed this so many times. The three aromatic amino acids, wherever they come, whether you see in them in psychiatry, pharmacology, they are very important. So there will always be a question on three aromatic amino acids. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan. Another question, a 16-year-old patient happens to have pellagra-like eruptions on skin. In spring season from last five years, with normal 5-hydroxy indole acetic acid and high amino acid urea. What is the probable diagnosis? Now because it is 5-HIAA is normal, it is not carcinoid tumor, it is not nutritional deficiency, rather pellagra like eruptions are seen with high amino acid urea. It is tryptophan which is getting excreted and that is seen as Hartnapf's disease. So in Hartnapf's, it is a problem at the level of PCT in kidneys. The transporter is defective as a result of which neutral amino acids are not reabsorbed. In Hartnapf's, there is defective at the level of the PCT renal tubular transporter as a result of which neutral amino acids are not reabsorbed. So easy way to remember it, it's a hereditary disorder. Autosomal recessive. It is a transporter defect of neutral amino acids which results in pellagra like symptoms which results in pellagra like symptoms characterized by classical 4Ds diarrhea, dementia, dermatitis and death. So yes, this is Hartnapf's disease because HIA is normal and there is amino acid urea with pellagra-like skin eruptions. Laryngismus stridulus is due to which of the following vitamin deficiencies? Per se, laryngismus stridulus is because of calcium deficiency. Now because vitamin D is involved in the, in the formation or the reabsorption of the Transporters which are particularly responsible for calcium uptake from the intestine, kidney and at the level of bones. Hence, the answer is vitamin D. If vitamin D was not in the option, then vitamin E is one of the main body's antioxidant defense mechanism. It results in numbness and is inability to control body movements with speech difficulties can also be seen in vitamin E deficiency. So the answer is vitamin D if it was there in the options. Another question, a post-translational modification common to all of these collagen, hemoglobin and immunoglobulin is. Now these are, collagen is a triple helix structure. It will form a staggered quaternary structure. Hemoglobin is having two alpha, two beta chains. 
immunoglobulin is having a light and a heavy chain and they are arranged to form immunoglobulin this kind of arrangement so the post translational modification which is common to all of them is subunit aggregation which is converting them to the quaternary structure the splicing is not a post translational modification it is post transcriptional modification hydroxylation is only for vitamin c dependent hydroxylation for collagen gene editing does not is not a post translational modification rather it will be the first thing to happen then interpret the following abg report the ph of the given if <clears throat> interpret the following abg report the ph given was 7.16 pco2 from recall was 20 and bicarbonate is 8 the normal concentration of ph is 7.35 if you remove 7 and 7 it will become 35 to 45 millimeters per mercury for co2 concentration and bicarbonate is 22 to 26 milli equivalent per liter pao2 is 75 to 100 mm of mercury so in this abg report provided the ph is low pco2 is low and bicarbonate is also low in other words we can say that the patient is suffering from metabolic acidosis the patient is suffering from metabolic acidosis because low ph there is there this will cause depletion of the bicarbonate and then there is low pco2 so that will completely negate these two options and because pco2 is low it is metabolic cause not a respiratory cause the process of converting unconjugated to conjugated substance now this is an overlapping question in pharmacology and biochemistry during the first phase of xenobiotics the drug gets hydroxylated by the enzyme cytochrome p450 in the subsequent step there will occur addition of either uronic acid which will be glucuronic acid and that was the options glucuronidation or there can be addition of glycine or there can be addition of glutathione there can be addition of glutathione these are responsible for phase 2 conjugation reactions so con unconjugated to conjugated drug is formed by glucuronidation it is formed by glucuronidation then which of the following is a cause of unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia let's see quickly in biliary atresia there is problem at the level of bile getting inside the intestine and hence there will be problem at the level of post hepatic bilirubin delivery in other words there will be increase in conjugated hyperbilirubinemia then for dupin johnson syndrome the problem is the defect is in the transport system the transport system is defective and hence there will be increase in conjugated bilirubin there is transport of conjugated bilirubin from the liver to the bile that is defective so there will be rise in conjugated bilirubin in case of rotor syndrome it is also increase in conjugated bilirubin because of the defective entry of the bile uh, biliary tract because of the entry of the bile into the biliary tract and hence there will be increase in the conjugated bilirubin then in gilbert syndrome however the problem is deficiency of the enzyme glucuronosyl transferase this enzyme will convert the unconjugated bilirubin to first monoglucuronide bilirubin and then to diglucuronide bilirubin and deficiency of this enzyme will result in increase in unconjugated bilirubin 
so in if the question was if the question was unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia was asked then the answer is gilbert syndrome but if the other question was if can be unconjugated ki jagah agar conjugated hyperbilirubinemia tha then options bhi aapke change ho jayenge uske hisab se then which of the following is the most sensitive cardiac biomarker the answer is troponin i troponin i is the most sensitive cardiac biomarker now both troponin i and t will increase i is more sensitive than t there is increase in ckmb also ast also ldh also but the others can like ast and ldh can increase in other disorders also particularly for ldh ldh2 is normally increased but in a case of mi ldh1 variant will increase this is called flipped ratio and so this question the answer will be the most sensitive cardiac biomarker the answer is troponin i so thank you all and all the best very very best for your result and those who are going to appear in the neat all the very best for the neat examination